fan Dana Grammon here. I am live in my dining room and I'm going to wait for a few people to come in before I start showing you the things I want to show you. Spur of the moment uh, video as usual. I don't like to plan ahead. I'm just not that kind of girl. I have to be in the mood. So I don't like being held down to a schedule if I don't have to. Hello, Deborah. Welcome, welcome. Have any of you seen my posts on YouTube today? And can you tell me what's been going on here? See if you've been watching my Susie Band Band, the YouTube page. I'm going to have a giveaway. I have a couple of puzzles. And if we can get, oh, let's say 15 people in here, I'll give one away. So if you want to share the chat or the, the live stream, I haven't seen your post yet. Okay, well, I'll catch you up on here as to what's been going on. Anyway, if we can get 15 people in here, I'm going to give a puzzle away. I've got two that whoever whoever wins could take their pick. Hey, Heather. Butterfly Enterprises. Love your puzzle. Yeah. Um, what do we think about the one we're doing now, honey? I didn't like it. It can go. It can go. Okay, I got three. You got three puzzles. We we love the puzzle as far as how it looks. It was tough. So if you like a challenge, uh, I have three puzzles now that we can give away. Uh, one today. So come on in and let me show you the puzzle that they just completed. How many days did it take? Four? Something like that. Yeah, took at least four days to do it and they worked on it several hours a day, two of them. I put a few pieces in, but it's mostly me and Dee. I didn't work at all on it. Yes, you did. <laughs> My husband gets frustrated easy, so when it gets too tough, Mandy does most of it. But he loves puzzles. We'll do one. Okay, let's see who else here. Deborah, Butterfly Enterprises, Heather, and Ginger Burkhouse. Hello. Okay, here's the most recent puzzle they just finished. Let me turn the camera around. Isn't that beautiful? You know I love it because I love teacups and such. This one was actually sent to me by a former co-worker. She moved to Florida and she does puzzles. And when she posted this one that she had done it, I told her how much I liked it. And she said, I'll send it to you. So she did. And she told me. It's lagging? Yeah, it's just now showing the puzzle. Oh, okay. Well, I think there usually is a delay anyway. <coughs> but sometimes there's a lag as well as the delay, like an unintentional lag. Yeah, I love that one. It's tough, but uh, it's really pretty and very satisfying to have it done. So that's that one's just called Teacups by Cobble Hill. And now the other two, the ones I said you, you could have a choice from, when I give them away. Let me grab them here. This is a, one that has a nice winter scene on it. It's from Bits and Pieces, a thousand piece puzzle. We did this one as well. And it's called Winter Barn 2. So that's another choice you can have. And the third one, we love the look of this puzzle, but it was a beast. It was hard to do. In fact, I'm going to put out a challenge with this one. I'm going to challenge and see whoever gets it, if they can actually get it all done and post it. Post a picture of it all done. All right, this one's called Chief of the Rosebud, and that's also a bits and pieces puzzle. The uh, border was a bear, wasn't it, hon? On the, on the Indian puzzle? The yeah, border? Yeah. Yeah. Right. They started in, in here, and they ended up doing the border last because it was just so hard to do. They had to do process of elimination. So there's a hint. If you, get, if you choose this beautiful puzzle... Then uh, that's the tip. The start on the inside and work your way out. It really gets tough. So, and some of the border pieces, you don't know if they're borders or not. That's one of those cuts that is a little difficult. 
Hi, Aunt Jody, Sister Jody. So those are the three puzzles that you have your pick of. If we get 15 people in here, we got 10. Okay, share the video, and then uh, we might get 15 in here, and I'll have a giveaway for a puzzle. If you don't mind a secondhand puzzle, we're 99.9% .9 sure all the pieces are in there because we took them apart right here, put them in a plastic bag, put them in the box, and then put rubber bands around them. So we're as sure as we can be that they're all there. So, okay, my husband wanted me to do this first because he's ready to get going. All right, it says I'm live now. Am I? Tell me if I come back on. It says I'm live here. Yeah, it'll lag a little bit and I'll come back. Just waiting to see that I'm live again. Yes? I see 15 people, three thumbs up. Yep. Lost the feed, says Deborah. We're back. Okay, you're back. Good. All right, I'm going to show you the next thing that happened today. We have friends, a pastor of a church. I'm back. <laughs> and um, there's a good thing about Trader Joe's, lots of good things. But Trader Joe's, if they have excess food or food that's getting uh, the over, yeah, overabundance of food or getting close to uh, their uh, expiration dates, instead of tossing it, they'll give it away to churches. And a friend of ours who has a church, sometimes when they have an overflow at their church, he'll bring some excess to us because he knows I can and uh, freeze and preserve food like that. Uh, hello, who is that? Rainbow, Rainbow Valley. Valley. Hello. Hello, Rainbow Valley. And today he brought me a surprise. He brought me a whole case of avocados. Can you believe it? A whole case. What am I going to do with a whole case of avocados? Well, I put out a SOS on the Frugal Family Food page. There we go. And I asked folks, because I, I don't usually buy avocados, once in a blue moon. And uh, they told me I could freeze them. And some said to dice them. Some said to uh, have them. And some said to mash them. And so I'll probably do a little of both, of all three. And I am making progress. Let me show you. <laughs> so there's the box that they came in. This is the mess I've been peeling and having. And this is what I've got so far. So I'll just do one of those, one or two of those right here before I move on to the next thing. Ashley Stevenson says, hey, -o. Aunt Jo says, holy guacamole. <laughs> yes, I think. Heather says, I believe you can freeze them. Yep, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to freeze them. Because uh, I wasn't sure. I just don't buy it enough to have researched it before to know. So here we go. They come out so easy. And they seem to be in good condition. I don't think they'll last long. At, you know, just left out like this. So I got them at a good time. There's a few I'm going to have to pitch. You know that have too many bad spots in them but for the most part look they're coming out beautiful living garden says oh all them avocado pits you could grow a bunch of trees <laughs> yeah i don't know in maryland do you think i could grow avocados in maryland <laughs> I, I really thought they were more of a tropical thing or southern thing. Heather going batty, I can send you my guacamole recipe. It's awesome. Yes, I would love that, Heather. Living garden, guacamole for days. Yep, guacamole for days. See, we're going away on Thursday. <clears throat> so I was a little concerned. How am I going to keep all this? So I was happy to hear I could freeze them. Rainbow Valley, early Super Bowl party. Yeah, we will have a Super Bowl party. I don't think, I don't think 
My husband will eat them. I don't think he'll eat guacamole. But my daughter Mandy will, and she's a big football fan. And who knows, other people might come by. I know I have one daughter who's allergic. My daughter Jennifer, the photographer, she's she's allergic. Living Miracle, I saw that, but I didn't know if you could freeze them. Yeah, I didn't either until everybody told me, and that seems to be the consensus that they freeze very well. And Butterfly it's so. Enterprises, I hear that you can regrow the seeds too. Yeah, maybe if you don't live in Maryland. <laughs> I've got so many now. You got any ideas what else you can do with the pits? So I'm going to leave this for a little bit and move on to something else. But I wanted to show you my avocado avalanche, the avalanche I have here. Let me wash my hands. Now, if you've been watching my live streams, you know that I receive these packages from Nadine West. And I got another one. Once a month, they send me a package. And Nadine West, ugh, let me turn this, is a subscription clothing program. And I'm usually not the least bit interested in that kind of thing. But, uh... It seems so simple, I wanted to try it, and they told me, because I have a YouTube channel, if I will show opening whatever they send me, clothing, that uh, they'll send it to me at no cost. How could I refuse? And so far, I think I've been getting it like five months, maybe. They've done really well by me. Engineer, you tell them your measurements, your sizes, the kitty cat's coming over. Kobe. Um, and what you like, what you don't like, what colors you like, what you don't like. And they go out and they have a personal shopper that will find things just for you. And why they wanted a plus size grandma, I don't know, but they offered it to me. And so I said yes. So now we'll see what they sent me this month. Living Miracle just catching up on comments that how sad allergies stink. Jamie says, hello, finally caught you live. Woohoo. Jamie, this is Jamie. Oh, okay. And then Rainbow Valley, this is fabulous packaging. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, I want to tell you too. This here, these are my mittens going out. I sold two pairs of my mittens, and these will be going out tomorrow to the people who bought them. So I got them finished and packed up over the weekend. All right, I'm gonna put my camera down so you oh, can it's see. Oh, Jamie Fowler. That's what I thought. It must be Jamie's Fowler, but. Hello, Jamie Fowler. Hi, Jamie. Jamie's got some of my, I think she's got two pair of my mittens. Yeah. Okay. Now they come wrapped like this. They're in this nice package. There's more in here. They sent me a lot. And uh, here's one package. Two pairs of mittens and your mug. Love them all. That's right. That's right. She did. All right. I'm cutting off the top of my head, but this is what you need to see. What did they send me this month? I always get so excited. Okay. Oh, yeah. What I was telling you was um, you fill out your questionnaire, they pick out your clothes, and then they send you a, a return shipping label. So anything you don't want, you just stick back in the same pink bag put the shipping label on it, send it back, no cost. And there's prices inside for what everything costs. If you love it and want to keep it, you just pay the price. That's how it works. And there's no monthly subscription fee or anything like that. Okay, I like this. Cut is nice. Isn't this nice? Yeah, it's long in the back to hide the booty. I like that. I like the colors. It looks like it will fit bandana grandma. <coughs> Uh, is, is Maniac Grammy on? She would love this. She's a hippie girl and she loves the peace sign. <laughs> this, oh, look what it's called. I love it. It's called Hippie Chick. <laughs> That's really cute. I got some comments. Butterfly Enterprises says, love your mittens. Will you sell your pattern? Sell, but want to make for family? Um, yes, I am making up a pattern. 
because the original one I got, I had to make changes on it. It just wasn't fitting right and wasn't perfect. What I want to do also is make up a uh, mitten kit where I can have all the fabric and the lining pieces, or, or enough lining in there, and the pattern pieces and directions. Went so, blurry on you. Went blurry? Blurry for everyone? Probably. Give it a sec. Yeah. Uh, more comments. Uh, the Creative Bug came on. Hey, baby, and her grandma. Hey, Creative Bug. Out of Goshen, girl. Luna G, love the mittens. Out of Goshen. Yay, bandana grandma. <laughs> Gamma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Deborah, pretty. Aunt Joe says, hi, Jamie. I love this. Max. Aunt Joe says, yeah, you're blurry. So get a little bit. How do we make it not blurry? Maybe I should cover the... And now it's... Reconnect? Yeah. Mm. Max. You connected, it's just blurry. Still. It's blurry still. I'm sorry, it's blurry. We don't have great internet here. and it, It's me, Jamie. <laughs> it comes in waves. Yes, that's my daughter, Mandy, helping me with the comments. All right, here's the next thing they sent. Gloves. <laughs> okay, I have mittens, but I don't have a lot. I like these. Look at fingerless gloves with a cute little pom-pom on them. Matches what I'm wearing. <laughs> it can't see because it's blurry. It can't see because it's blurry. Oh. Hi, Mandy. Who's that? Jamie's saying, is Jamie? that Mandy reading the comments? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to wait a couple seconds here to see. I'll let you know when it's done. Yeah. I hate wasting simple time. Simple food, simple life. Hello, bandana. Glad I caught you live. Hello, Robin. I'm glad you're here. <clears throat> Robin has a good channel too. Going Batty has a great channel. Out of Goshen has a great channel. So if you're not subscribed to any of those, do so. We have two paparazzi jewelry people in here. Jamie Fowler sells paparazzi jewelry. And of course, I got to give my sister Jody a big plug because she sells paparazzi jewelry. And, uh, but they can hear me, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, she sells paparazzi jewelry, and she goes live on uh, Friday nights at 7.30 usually. Uh, and you just look, if you look for Jody Malm, M-A-L-M, I'll put a link down below. Ask him, is it still blurry for you? Is it still blurry for you? Jamie says, oh, thank you. <laughs> Another girl in Batty. I am nine degrees today. Wow. Are they mentioning it? Are they telling you if it's still, still blurry? It's still blurry. Oh, I'm disappointed. I want to show you all these pretty things. <coughs> Aren't these cute, man? Yeah, they're cute. I think it's, my, it's getting better. It's getting better? Yeah. We're waiting for the picture to improve. <coughs> still blurry. Yeah. Oh, looks better to me. Okay, I'm going to keep going right now. Yeah, keep going. Okay. Looks good. Here's the next thing I pulled out of the package. Fingerless gloves. Aren't they cute? Oh, I need to be telling you what they what, what they charge for this. Let me get my paper out. <clears throat> okay, for the first shirt I showed you. Hmm. I gotta figure out which is which here. Eggplant and black. Is that what that one was? Where did I put it? This. Yeah, I think that's eggplant and black. I think it's blue and charcoal, but green and gray. How about green and gray? <laughs> yeah. Okay, this one. All right, this shirt. It's called Raleigh. R Y L E I G H. Green and gray. And that one sells for $24.49. And I'll see if I can tell you what it's made out of. The fabric. It feels really, really soft. And you know, I tell you the truth. If I don't like something, I'm going to tell you, ah, you missed on this one, Nadine. All right. It's 95% rayon, 5% spandex. So that's why it's so nice and soft. The creative bug said the mittens are cute. Yeah, they are. Okay, there it is, like that one, and I like 
I like the fingerless gloves. I wouldn't want to try and make those. These are definitely like machine made. That'd be quite a chore to make all those fingers. <coughs> Laura Richard says, hi Susie, looking beautiful as always. <laughs> Laura always says that. Simple food, simple life. You look adorable today, Susie. <laughs> Glad you have a helper. Yes, it's easier when I have my help in handy. Thank you, Laura, honey. All right, next thing coming out of the bag is another shirt. Okay, it's got white trim around the top. I like that because it brings the eyes up instead of in the middle where we have things we don't like people looking at. <laughs> and again, it's the same, the same brand, Hippie Chick. Nice and soft. It's a maroon, a rusty maroon and white stripe. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. <laughs> it uh, is 95% rayon, 5% spandex. Same, same fabric too. Okay. Oh, this the other one though, because this one's ribbed, the other one feels even softer. So, let's see what they want for this one. Uh. Top, Alicia. I guess they're calling this red, unless there's another red top in here yet. So this one would be $16.49. That's what they'd be asking for that, if that indeed is the Alicia. I think it is. And they also include jewelry. So I got this little bag with some jewelry. It looks pretty cute. It's, yeah, it is knotted up. This is not good. Let's see how quickly it comes unknot. Oh, I like the way it swivels there. Hey, give it to me while you do something else and I'll... You got it? I got it. It wasn't that bad. Okay, this is a necklace. And all these things swivel around each other. Okay, so they like turn. It's not all one solid piece. They all turn and like that. Rainbow Valley says that is pretty reasonable. What a great concept. Yeah. Butterfly Enterprises. Not bad prices on the clothing. No, it's not. Uh, see, that's another thing. You tell them what your budget is. And they'll, they'll, when the person looks for your clothing, they'll find ones that are close to your budget. All right. So this is jewelry. It's a necklace called Ripple Effect. And that is $17.99. So that's ripple effect jewelry and I'll put that back in its little baggie. I like it. Okay and now I have a whole other bundle in here. We have another jewelry piece next to each other. Oh yeah, wait a minute, there's another jewelry piece that was in that first bundle. Bangles. Mandy says yes because I can't fit bangles on my hand and she gets them. <laughs> okay, they're kind of cute. So, there's different patterns there. They're gold with a chain down one. Rainbow Valley wants you to say the name of the company again. Nadine West. N-A-D-I-N-E-W-S-T. There's a link below and I think you actually get a little freebie something if you use the link below. So, here's my problem with bangles. I can't wear them. I don't even know if Mandy's going to get into this one. So I find their bangles around kind of slow, but I got some skinny granddaughters. So those are small. Yeah, Mandy says they're small too. She's trying them on. Those are small. Those are small. Okay, I have two skinny granddaughters, so they'll get these. <laughs> they're not only skinny, they're petite. All right, my second bundle. This is exciting. I love it. I just, you know, they actually say you can get it more than once a month if you want to, but I just thought it'd be a little greedy if I did that. <laughs> Besides, it's hard keeping up with the videos. All right, here is a skirt. All right, it's a knit skirt. I don't think this will be flattering on me. Wear it how I would wear it, if you know what I mean. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what you can do, though. Let me show you something. Mandy showed me this trick before when I had some skirts that were a great pattern. <laughs> great pattern, nice fabric. 
but I just didn't think they looked good on me. Infinity scarf. <laughs> you can make a scarf out of it. And you can make it big or small. Fix it up. Look at Now I got me a scarf. So, if you like the skirt and you're not built like Bandana Grandma, you can wear this type of skirt. Great. If not, pass it on or you can wear it as a scarf. Or you can send it back in the package and not worry about it. <clears throat> but it is soft. It's got like a rib through it. I like the heather color. I just don't think this type of skirt is attractive on me. Deborah said nice bangles and Laura Richard says it's like Christmas gifts. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, what's this one? Rainbow Chris Valley said that is very clever. <laughs> thank you, Rainbow Valley. Yeah. Mandy says thank you because... Uh, Butterfly says, I like it better as a scarf. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's some leggings. I like flower prints. If I have something long and dark to wear down, long and dark to wear over them, then I love kind of pinks and corals, so that's kind of pretty. You know, one of these days I'm going to have a try-on video, and I'll be mixing and matching all the different things they sent me and tell you the things that worked and didn't. Oh, I must be able to wear these because they say they're slimming. <laughs> I'm not one of these women that think if you can get into them, they fit. You know. Is that supposed to go with a striped shirt to mix striped patterns shirt? and colors? I, Mandy's good at mixing patterns and colors. I'm a little more conservative, so I'm not sure if I would... Well, that's cute together, I think. Okay, Mandy likes this. <laughs> Mandy likes... Let's see if I can show Mandy, you. Mandy's hip. Yeah, Mandy's hip and cool. Oh, Mom's old. Mom's Mom's not old. so hip and cool. Oh, that's not bad because this isn't such a bright, wide stripe. It almost looks like a neutral. I think you could wear that together. But this would have to be long enough. And for me, that one I don't think is long enough for me to wear with leggings. Butterfly, black sweater with the leggings. Yep. And Laura, we're all built differently. <laughs> Very diplomatic, Laura. <laughs> All right, down to the last thing. And I love the color. It's another Hippie Chick brand. And it is... I love this. I love this. Okay, it's, you could dress it up. You could dress it down. It's got long sleeves. It's super soft. It looks big enough to fit Bandana Grandma. So I love that. Yeah, hippie chick. Oh, I didn't give you prices on those other ones. Let me go through again. Give you those other prices. Thank you, Jamie. She said I have a great sense of style. Yes, Mandy does have a great sense of style. Okay, the top. Um, eggplant and black. Which one was that, Mandy? That's the one we were That's confused. this one. That has black on it? Yeah, it's got a black. So it's got black trim. It's hard to see. Okay, from here. so this is Macy. And it's twenty dollars and ninety nine cents for this top. Ginger, sorry, Ginger Ribosome says hi. Hello, Ginger. Country girl, bandana grandma. Hello, beautiful. Hello, country girl. Butterfly ass is that shirt burgundy? The one you're holding. The one I'm holding. It's kind of a purpley burgundy. Yeah. What would you say? Eggplant. Eggplant was pretty spot on. Yeah, eggplant's pretty close. With the black trim, it's hard to see, but yeah. Yeah, and it's nice and long. Here. I'll even stand up for you and hold it in front of me. If I can swivel my camera. There we go. I don't know if I can get back far enough. Far enough. Uh, wait a minute. There. Show you how long it is. So that's good length. It'll cover front and back, I think. And you know what? What, you, what about with this, Mandy? Yep. Yep, it'll go with, this. It'll go with these. Because the center of the flowers has that darker color in there. So I think I could wear this with that. Yeah, and it's long enough. Yeah, I would do that. Thank you, Nadine West. I like it. All right, so that one was... Green Gables Homestead says hello. Hello, Green Gables. I haven't seen you in a long time on my videos. I'm glad to see you here. She always tells my mom 
if you think it doesn't look, look good on you, it's because it will. <laughs> it will, huh? If you don't think it looks good, it will. And Butterfly was about to suggest that you wear that shirt with the flowered leggings. So yep. Yeah, you were right, Butterfly. Okay, the uh, the bracelet uh, that the bangles was uh, nine dollars and forty nine cents. The shandy gray was fifteen ninety nine. That must be the skirt. Oh, the skirt. It just says other infinity skirt. Oh no, that's that's the gloves. Okay. The gloves, the fingerless gloves. Ashley says pretty clothes, and then she says I gotta go. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Ashley. Okay. Bottom, Carmina Gray. That's the skirt. That was $17.99. So, you know, you make your own decisions about those things, what you think. But I told you mine. I love most of it. The skirt I wouldn't wear as a skirt. Uh, it looked like everything was well made. I didn't see, like, last time there was one thing I got that had stripes, and they just did not match at the seams, and that didn't thrill me. But they take your, your uh, suggestions. When, when you get a package, you go back on and each item is listed and you tell them if you liked it, if you didn't, what you didn't like, and then next time they adjust what they send you. And for these prices, you're getting a stylist, so that's fun. And you never know what's going to come. So I enjoy that. If you'd like to try it, go down and try Nadine West. Deborah had said that was a great length on the shirt. Uh, the Living Miracle said I love that color. Green Gable says, I've been working on my mom's house renovation for the past three months. Haven't been on YouTube much lately. In Rainbow Valley, I went shopping with you this morning. Country girl, my hands were not free to comment, but she was, that was to somebody else. Oh, <laughs> okay. I hope you could hear Mandy because I didn't repeat what she said, but she was reading the comments. All right. Was there anything else out here? Oh, one thing. If you were watching my video before, you saw that I was disappointed because I lost my favorite big crock pot and let me turn the camera I'll show you oops right. Right. see right there it's on its way out the door that's my broken crock pot it cracked and I was very disappointed but if you look over there you'll see an identical one and pardon my house, it's not it's not company ready. All right, I got an identical one. I went on Amazon and I saw the ones they had and I found the one I wanted, but you know, that was kind of pricey, $39 or something. And I looked below the first marking and it said other places you could buy it and it said used. And I looked at one that said used, and it was from Amazon. And it looked to me like it must have been a customer return. It said the box might be damaged. Well, the box came. It was it was a good ten or twelve dollars less than the other. The box came. It looked a little worn, not bad, but everything inside was pristine. It was still wrapped in its foamy thing. It had all the papers with it. I don't think it had ever been used and I'm really happy to have it again. So I use that a lot for my canning and I always make huge meals because I had seven kids and I haven't learned how to cook small yet. So I make meals and freeze them and I'm happy to have my crock pot back. All right, I'm going to go into the office, my sewing room now. Uh, if you watched, you know that I cleaned it up and I got a video coming out soon. <laughs> My husband is laughing and shaking his head because I know you'd love seeing before and afters of a big messy room being made clean and I did it. <laughs> so I'm going to go to my office now and I'm going to sew on a mitten and then we're going to say goodbye. Oh, my sink? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you about that. Okay, that sink right there. <laughs> my husband said, thought you'd never ask. <laughs> okay, that sink, when we were renovating this house, that's the type of sink I wanted. But every time I looked for one, it was like $800, $1,200.
Then we went to, a, um, oh golly, what's that? So, Ikea. I went to Ikea and they had that double sink for $300 and I said sold. So uh, we got that sink and the cabinet company, it was an online cabinet company where I bought all my cabinets, they're really nice hardwood cabinets. Uh, they gave me the clue that instead of buying the under sink cabinet, to buy the above refrigerator cabinet, that one up there, and set it on the floor and have my plumber plumb it through that, and that's what he did, and it was a lot less money too. So, little tip on saving money when you're renovating your kitchen. All right, back to the office. Laura says, where's the fairies? Then she said, have an awesome day. She's in Maine. Okay, thank you, Laura. The fairies are going to come back in another video, probably within a month. All right, I'm done. All right. Mandy's done with comments. She has things to do, and her battery's getting low. And she's they're starting a puzzle. <laughs> so I'm going to come in here and work on some mittens. Okay, I think I'm back. Now, those of you who aren't interested in seeing mittens being made, you will probably want to leave now. I'm going to thread up this machine and start making some liners and putting together another pair of mittens that someone's already bought, actually. And I'm going to start that now. Okay, bye, Living Miracle. Here's my machine. I'll see if I can pull you in a little. Get a better view for those who want to watch. And I need some thread. <coughs> I've been having trouble with this machine. It's not an expensive machine at all. It's quite a, a cheapy one. My bobbin's been giving me fits. Every time I try and change the bobbin, it just seems to take forever for it to catch and come up and not break. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But we'll see. Maybe this time I'll have better luck. And it's not going to last too long because the bobbin is getting low. But we'll put it in here. Change the color to white. This isn't going to be easy to see because it's going to be white on white, but you'll get the gist of what I'm doing. It, it'll go pretty quick with me just sewing up the uh, liners, which is what I have to do first. The mitten liners. I'll show you the mittens I'm making. <clears throat> if you were on my Facebook page this morning, Susie Bandana, you saw that I had this fabric laid out well, now I've got it sewed up somewhat. I've got the, the palms attached to the backs. And this will be the cuff. Actually, this side. This will be the cuff. And I have to put the liners in. So I've got to make the liners now before I do the cuff. So let's see if I can thread this bad boy. And if it won't give me fits this time. 
One of these days I'll get me a decent machine. I'd love to have one like Heidi of Rain Country has where you pedal it so I can, excuse me, take it to uh, fairs and uh, the craft shows and actually do my, show how I do my mittens there when there's no electricity. Some of those things are in fields. Now, see, that's not working. It's popping it out. So, I get it up high. Usually what I have to do is put it in again and again and again, and then it catches. Why it doesn't catch, I have not figured out. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. All right, I'm supposed to put it with the thread going over the top and the slot on this side, that's correct. And then when this is at its apex, I can see the opening where it's supposed to go in and lock. And I push it, and I really don't think it locks. See what happens? It falls right out. So do I have any seamstresses on there who have had this problem and can say, Scoozy, I know what's wrong. Because otherwise, I just keep doing it again and again and again until it works. catch the thread. All right, caught the thread. And now it's nope, it's coming out. This is gonna be an exciting, exciting video. All right. It has to go over the back like that. This has to be forward like that. It has to go in like that and pull down to that slot and be free. And it is. And this thing, right there is where the holes line up, so you should be able to click it in. But it don't want to click in. Any suggestions? This has been doing this to me for months. And I can't figure it out. Let's see. Let's see. Sewing since I was nine and do all sorts of stuff. Quilt and fashion and crafts. Never been able to get organized like that. I'm still here watching and learning. <laughs> Bob and Tension maybe. Yeah, it's on the same tension it is bo oh, bobbin tension. You mean the little screw on the bobbin case? Where's that sucker? Oh, yeah, that one. I don't think I have a little screwdriver that'll fit in there. Oh, maybe my fingernail will hold it. You know what? Let me try that. Let me try turning it. It is loose because I can turn it with my fingernail. You know when you say, why didn't I think of that? Okay, let's see. I, I just tightened the bobbin tension. Hey, Freddie. There may be a rough piece of metal or it's not catching. Yeah. To hold the spool holder in. Also, check tension on the bobbin holder. Yep. Hold the locking lever until it snaps, then release it. Okay. Now, this is, I don't know why I never had trouble with this, and then all of a sudden, I'm having problems. Am I forgetting how to do it because I'm getting older? <laughs> Maybe. I won't say it's not possible. All right, well now, all right, now it's a little too tight because I'm having trouble 
pulling it. So I'm going to loosen it up a little on the bobbin case holder. Oh, guess what I found? Let's see if this works. See if this works. I need all you experts to help me figure out why I'm having trouble with my bobbin. All right, it opened a little bit. I know it has to be loose enough to pull through easily. All right, put it in here again, pull it through there. It's a little stiff yet, so I'll loosen it a little more. Okay, now it feels good. All right, hold the thing open. I think she might hold that little lever open until it snaps. Maybe that's the trick. Well, it stayed in. Oh, you missed it, didn't you? Sorry. Okay. Maybe that's the, maybe that's it. Maybe that little lever, I wasn't holding it open long enough when I stuck the case in there. Next time I'll try the same thing and see if that was the deal. You guys are brilliant. You may have solved my problem. Thank you. All right. Who was that? Rainbow Valley says that's why she hasn't learned to sew. The bobbin drives her nuts. It does. It drives me nuts. <laughs> okay, check the tension, tension on the bobbin holder. I did that and I adjusted it good. And then Rainbow, no. Uh, whoever said hold that little lever. There it is. Hold. Hold the locking lever. Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. I think that might have been my problem that I was jumping the gun, letting go of that lever before it actually snapped in. Okay. Here's my mitten liners. I got one put together with a thumb on the left. So now I got to make sure I make one with a thumb on the right. Unless I want to go out and find a person with two right hands or two left hands, whatever it is. All right. Uh-oh. Oh, tell me. I don't have another one. Oh, cut. Well, I have to cut another piece. I don't have all the pieces I need. Let me get my fabric. One, I'm one piece short. This piece. And where did I put my pin cushion? Well, maybe I'll get brave and try it without pinning it. Oh, here it is. I'm not using more fabric than I need to. I really thought I had all the pieces I needed. I think what I did was I cut twice of the same piece, thinking I was cutting the this piece.
think I'm going to have these scissors sharpened on Monday. My daughter works for a garden center, and on Mondays, there's a guy who comes with a truck and he sharpens the tools. And so she can get me a deal if I bring anything in that I need to have sharpened. Okay, got my piece. Now, this is the split palm. This is one piece right here, and there's the other piece there. And when I sew them together, it makes a split palm. So when I do it in the fabric, I put a different kind of fabric on top than I do on the bottom to make interest. Like, like this. I have a top and a bottom with different, different fabric on it. So, I got that one sewn together. Now I need to sew this one together. And I got to make sure it's the opposite hand than the one I've got done. See if I can darken that for you. Doesn't seem to want to darken. Okay, you got that one and this one. And they're opposite, so now I can sew them together. Here's where the thumb attaches, one to the other. Now I did clean this out and oil it myself yesterday. Sewing uh, sweater materials makes a lot of fuzzies. So yeah, that could be a problem gumming it up, up the works and it was getting noisy and somebody pointed that out to me and you know sometimes you ignore things more longer than you should so I took it apart and opened things up brushed it out blew it out and oiled everything and there was quite a bit of fuzzies in there from the sweaters okay Now we have two mittens, liners, and we put the backs on them. Now with the, with the liners, I don't put right sides together because we don't want the seam inside where your hand is. They're going to stay on the outside because the mitten covers all this. 
And so this will be between the uh, inside and outside of the mitten. And the seam against, there will be no seams against your hand, just the finish, the smooth side of the mitten. It's going to be okay. Oh, my thread broke. My thread broke. So let's thread it up again. How many times a project do you have to rethread your needle? It's gonna drive you nuts. Bag. To secure it. And then I trim off the excess. Being careful not to cut any of the stitching. Right, and now we take the mitten liners. Oh, got another thread. <clears throat> take the mitten liners that have been straight stitched, then double stitched with st stress points here and here, triple stitched, and I put them inside the mitten. Line up the seams so they're nice and comfy. The seams from the liner and the seams on the mitten. It's good and comfy. And it even looks better once you get the liner in there because it fills out and fluffs it out. It looks nice. So there's that. Now it's ready for the cuff. So the cuffs, I've learned... To make them, cut them kind of tight because you want them stretched out a little bit when you put them on. So I cut it just a little bigger than my wrist. And then if there's any flare, like some sleeves, when you take them off the sweaters, the cuffs have a real bell shape to them. And you don't want that. See, that one's going out in a flare. You don't want that. So I'm going to cut this flare out. And we're going to do this. Cut that flare off. So there's not so much. All right. And you do want to stretch it on the wrist. So let's see how this one works. Uh, I better change my thread again. I don't want white on that. Now we'll see if the bobbin works this time. Hope I didn't lose my brown bobbin. <coughs> All right, I'll take this one out. Put it in here. Oh, here. There's my brown one. All 
All right, here's the moment of truth. Am I going to have the same problem? Come on, get on the spindle. See if the bobbin falls out this time. Thread up the white thread. What am I doing? White thread. No, not white thread. Thread up the brown thread. guys are geniuses. It's perfect now. Thank you. I had a senior moment. Couldn't remember that I was supposed to hold that tab out. Okay. Now we'll sew this up. I've got right sides together here. I want it on a straight stitch to start. And now I zigzag it. Okay, now this is what puts it all together. And you'll have no seams showing in here. See, it's there's a finished seam there, and this is the part that you don't want against your hand. And then you put this right side out. Let's see how it's going to fit the wrist. Yeah, that'll be good. All right, so you put it right side out and you put the finished edge in first with the seam, the seam over here where this thumb, the thumb seam is. So finished edge down inside and line up these seams, the thumb seam. And you want to get the white liner even with the cuff and the wrist part of the mitten. And then you pin it. All right, now you're going to go to the opposite side so you know you're distributing the material evenly. And again, pull that liner up so it's even with everything. Give it a tug to make sure it's the fabric is being distributed with no gaps. Put in a pin. Then go quarter way around. And do the same thing. And then this other quarter over here, we're just going to tuck that under the, the needle to hold it. So in it goes. You want to make sure your under fabric, your middle fabric, and your top fabric are all even. Drop your foot. <coughs> I leave just a little bit, I don't know if you can see, but on the right side of the foot, I leave just like an eighth of an inch sticking out. 
I want a straight stitch first. And I remove my pins as I go around because I've broken needles when I don't. forgotten about the puzzle tell you what I don't care how many people's in here whoever's here at the end they're the ones we'll have the drawing with all right now I put it on zigzag and I stitch just a little closer to the edge that's done I go around and I trim the edge being careful not to hit the stitching just to get the fuzzies off and if there's a little unevenness make it nice and straight like that take any threads off Okay, and now you reach inside, you take out that cuff, and you fold it back over the mitten, like so. And you try it for size. Yeah, that's better when they're tighter. Okay. And get this up a little there so here's the mitten now the person who's buying these does not want any buttons on it I will hand stitch all around here so this doesn't pull back and expose the inside and sometimes what I do, if this is making too much of a bump here, I will go around again and I'll, I'll zigzag down that right there so it doesn't make a bump underneath the cuff. And for this one, because the cuff is showing that bump, I'm going to do that. That's a little tricky, but that's what I'm going to do now. you got to be careful because you can catch the other side in there. It's you got to finagle it pretty good. Okay, I got it on a zigzag. And I have to make sure I pull all the fabric away from underneath so it doesn't stitch down the opposite side. And you're only seeing like an, an inch at a time under here. I don't know if I can get you any closer or not. I'll try. I'm trying to make it a little darker, but... It won't. All right. So this little hem right here, I'm stitching that down against the cuff so it won't make a bump, so much of a bump underneath when I fold the cuff back. And it's very persnickety. You have to pull this part out and the under part back. So you don't catch anything that shouldn't be caught in there. Mm, 
thread is gonna be tightened a little. The needle came unthreaded. See, that's what takes so long with sewing. You have all these little things that you have to tend to along the way. You thread the needle again. go back to what you were doing. Find where I left off. We do like an inch at a time here. Holding my breath to make sure I didn't catch anything in there I wasn't supposed to. So that's one of the little difficult things about these. If you want to do them so they look the best, you have to do that little trick. And it helped a lot. There was a big bump right here, and now there's not. Because I went in and I stitched this edge right here down. I stitched it down so it wouldn't stick up with a little where the where the uh mitten join the cuff and now it's down flat so when you fold it back when you fold it back now you don't have that unsightly bump right here the little things you do to make your customers happy Yep, that's much better. There was, used to be a bump right there, and now there's not. Okay, so all I have to do to finish this one up is uh, hand stitch. I'll do that later all around here so this stays up. I hand stitch that, and then this mitten is done. Let me check the comments before I do the other one. All right. 
here. Oh, I've been buffering again. I'm so sorry. Yes, I saw Claire um, from Big Family Homestead give me the shout out about my mittens because I had sent her a pair and she loves them. They are warm. They're super warm. Because the fabric, because the wool fabric is shrunk first, it makes the weave tighter. So they're more, they're warmer, they're more uh, water and fray resistant. And then I put that fabulous stretch fleece lining inside. So they're super warm. Only in my dreams. Hello. Don't know if she's still here or not. I've been sewing a while. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody's kitty is sick, I think. I'm sorry. It's always sad. Okay, Darlene Thompson. Hello. Sorry, I'm right up in your face here with me. <laughs> Thank you. Nice mittens. They look so warm. They really are warm. I love the mittens. Would love a pair where one side, the finger part folds back so I can answer my phone, etc. Yeah, I thought about messing around with a pattern like that. I haven't done it yet, though. Okay, Rainbow Valley. Hello. Deborah hasn't sewn in years. She needs to get back to sewing. Thank you. All right. For those hanging out, I'm just going to throw this other one together and then we're going to pull for, uh, we're going to have a little trivia game. And if whoever answers a trivia question first will get the puzzle, a choice of their puzzle. Um, I want to tell you ahead of time that this happens on all the trivia games. Um, what looks first on my screen may not look first on your screen because in your house, you're closest to your computer. Your name's going to come up ahead of where it actually feeds into my stream. So it has to be what feeds into my stream first, not what shows on, on your computer first. And it, it will be different, and you'll see it differently. But uh, I promise it it's just whoever comes first on my screen and we have the trivia question. Okay. Now I'm going to finish this one. And I should have put the back on the liner when I had the white thread in there, but I didn't. So now I gotta change the thread again. Tell you what, this is what I'm gonna do. We're gonna have the drawing for the puzzle now. I'm not gonna make you, make you wait around. Then I'll come back in here and who, well, actually we'll draw, the, we'll draw right here. I'll go get the puzzles and we'll have the trivia game right now. And then if anyone wants to st stick around, watch me finish the next mitten, you can. I'll be right back with the puzzles. Okay, here's the puzzles. So be thinking about which one you might want if you're the one who gets the prize. How many are in here? 11, okay. That's not so bad. So here's the Indian puzzle. What I can tell you about this is we loved the composition of this puzzle. We love the look of him. He is in full regalia. Look at that, we call it his man purse down here. <laughs> But, and look at that face. We just love this Indian puzzle, Native American puzzle. Uh, it is a bear to do. It's hard. It was difficult. Uh, it took them the better part of a week, I think, to put it together. Uh, the border is very hard. It's Usually they start with the border first. This one, they ended up starting with the middle so that they could match colors and, and things and work their way out to eliminate puzzle pieces. So when they got to the border, it wouldn't be quite so difficult. So if you're up for a challenge, this is the one. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I'm, I'm offering a challenge. I'd love to see somebody get it who's really serious about putting it together. And then I'm going to challenge you to uh, put
put it together within two weeks and uh, show us a picture of it all put together. Come back on my live stream or send it to my Susie Bandana Facebook page of pictures if you got it all together that would be really cool so that's if you choose uh chief of the rosebud that's what that one is from bits and pieces thousand pieces <coughs> and the other one was this winter scene another thousand piece bits and pieces this one is called winter barn two so you can say barn if you say uh native american or barn and then the next one is this teacup one, difficult. This was difficult. So uh, Cobble Hill, this was sent to me by a, my coworker I used to work with in the hospital. I was a medical transcriptionist and she moved to Florida, retired, and she was doing puzzles and I complimented her and she sent it to me. So we did this one, we just took it apart you saw it earlier in the stream, and since then my husband took it apart and it's back in the box. And if you're really interested in that one, that one is just called teacups. So teacups, Native American, or barn. Those are the three puzzles to choose from. Now I have to think of a trivia question for you guys to answer. Hmm, I should have had one ready. I, I, actually, last week when I was going to do this, I had one. I'm trying to think. Of the same question, something about my stream or my family. Okay, get your fingers ready. <laughs> uh, okay, there's 12 in here now. All right, for the puzzle. Hmm. All right, I'll ask this question. When I was 15 years old, a very famous musician asked if he could give me a kiss. And I told him no, because I was a Beatles fan. I told that story several times. If you've watched some of my videos, you might know the answer. First one who comes up with the right answer on my screen gets a puzzle. Anybody? Elvis. <laughs> no, I'm not that old. <laughs> oh, White Picket Fence got it. Mick Jagger. That's right. That's absolutely right. When I was 15 years old, my sister, Patty, won tickets to go see the Rolling Stones, and she wasn't interested. I was crazy about the Beatles, but, uh, you know, I was up for seeing that. It was, wasn't just the Stones. It was Jay and the Americans. You know, I'm 68 years old. I'm going to be... Uh, interested in music that you guys probably some of you haven't heard of some of you may may be closer than my age to my age so uh we won the tickets i won the tickets i took her for girlfriend my girlfriend was crazy crazy about mick jagger and the rolling stones and that's why i took her because we weren't real close friends but she was so crazy about them i thought you know if it was me and somebody won tickets to see the Beatles, and they took somebody who wasn't really interested in the Beatles, <laughs> I would have been really mad. So I took somebody I knew would love to meet the Rolling Stones. So we went backstage to meet them, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and she's all gaga, and she's saying to Mick Jagger, can I kiss you? And he says, sure, love, and he leans over, and he gives her a kiss. And then he turns to me, and he says, how about you, love? And I said, no thanks, I'm a Beatles fan. <laughs> so, so I would kiss Mick Jagger. I didn't kiss Mick Jagger. And uh, I always joke and say, if you're out there, Mick, I'm the one who turned you down. <laughs> so, I've got my own Mickey now, so I don't need Mick Jagger anyway. So that's the story. And White Picket Fence, uh, let's see, Sky, right? Isn't that your name, Sky? All right, let me, let me make sure. Elvis, 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 Mick Jagger. Okay, Sky is the first one on my list. Jamie is underneath. So, Jamie, on your screen, it might show you, but Sky is first on mine. That's White Picket Fence. Sky, which puzzle do you want? Oh, she's telling me again my name is Sky. I remembered before I read it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, great memories is right. Sky, which puzzle? The Native American. Okay. 
Okay, Sky, it's a challenge. You think you can do it? Uh, get your family to help. We don't care. Uh, it was three of us working on this. Most Mandy does most of them. She's really good. She's got a good eye. So uh, I'll send this to you. Uh, you're going to have to send me your mailing address. And I'll get this out to you probably, probably tomorrow. I want video of you. Oh, <laughs> Mandy wants video of you working on the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> She's yelling from the other room. She wants video of it work of you working on the puzzle. Okay, my next live stream, I'll give away another puzzle. So I hope you enjoy this. Be forewarned, it's tough. But we did it. If we did it, you can do it. If Mandy did it, you can do it. But we all we all took part in it. No, no, it shows Sky being first. Congrats. Oh, does it? Okay, good. So it doesn't always, you know. Okay, I guess that's it for today. Uh, for those who want to go now, that's fine. I'm going to leave the camera on, finish my other mitten. If you want to hang around with me, okay. Um, but it's pretty much going to be a repeat of what I just did. And I'll check back. I'll check the comments if you have any questions. So for those of you who are leaving, bye-bye. Have a blessed day. See you next time. Please like, share, and subscribe. Darlene loves to watch. And Laura's still here. Aw, thank you. Have a great day, Mama Susie and Mandy. Okay, Jamie says have a great day, Amanda. Her too. Her too. <laughs> <laughs> My husband says have fun storming the castle. So, okay, who knows what that's from? Huh? Come on, come on. Who knows what that's from? Have fun storming the castle. What movie? I'll get that answer <laughs> before I start working. No prize. I just want to see who's the smarty pants and knows the answer. Nobody? Or is it just the lag? It's probably the lag. All right. I'll start sewing and then I'll check back. For the couple of you who are staying, back to the sewing. Well, I'm really happy that I seemed, with your help, to get figured out why my bobbin kept falling out. I just wasn't hanging on to the lever long enough before I tried to snap it in there. The little open-shut lever, locking lever. Trim it, <laughs> make it a little easier. Okay, get the white one out again. Not a whole lot left on there. Hopefully, it'll be enough to just go around that. Outside of that <coughs> line, or excuse me. And after I do this mitten, I'm going to say goodbye and go finish processing that those uh, avocados. And I have a turkey I'm going to put in the oven and let it cook all night. Look at that. Thank you so much. That's what was wrong. It works. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I spoke too soon. You know what? I'm not sure I hung on to it that long. Let me try again. Now it's working. Yeah, that was it. Alrighty. So, there's the front. I just have to put the back on. <coughs> and 
And we do not put right sides together, if you remember, because we want the seams on the outside because the mitten fits over the top and we don't want seams on the inside where your hand goes. So, I'll give it a couple of pins just to keep it behaving when it goes through. This is a long live stream. I may, you know, cut it back. I don't know. Who in the world wants to watch a live stream that's... How long has it been? 92, 93 minutes? That's awful long live stream, huh? Hour and a half. But that's what happens when you're sewing. Time passes. And doing puzzles. <laughs> We're amazed sometimes we sit down and spend 10 minutes doing a puzzle and before we know it, an hour's gone by. Okie dokie, here we go. <coughs> Straight stitch. stress point where the thumb pulls. Now the zigzag. Be careful you don't catch the thumb in the seam. Okay. Now I trim the edges of the excess. Being careful not to cut into my zigzag. Or my thumb. <laughs> I want to keep that thumb out of the way. That would be unfortunate. Cut the tip of the thumb off while I'm trimming the edges. And now, I'll put it on my hand. Make sure there's no fuzzy stuff into it, stuck to it. <coughs> and I put it in the mitten. Smooth it out. Line up all. I can feel the edges inside, so I line them up so they're perfectly aligned and comfortable like that and then we take the cuff and measure it for size I'll cut off the excess flare I don't like it Let's see. Besides what I don't like it curving out 
too much. It just doesn't work well. So we have to cut that straight on the edges here too. Cut the flare off and cut it straight. It works better. Okay. And I think I need a little more off of this one to make it even with the other one. Now we put right sides together. Changed out the thread. Harder and harder for me to thread needles. <clears throat> okay, it threaded fine. Right sides together on the cuff and straight stitch. The bobbin is not happy. The bobbin's very unhappy. I don't think I was careful enough when I put it in. I kind of forgot to hold that tab out. I do think that's what was wrong. Yeah, it's falling out again. Operator error. It was my fault. I can't be so quick. Let go of that locking lever. Locking lever out. Hang on to it. Put it in. Oh, there we go. That might have done it. Yep. I think it did it. Much better. Okay, one more try at that straight stitch. Zigzag. Okay. 
in the excess threads, turn it right side out. Now for the mitten. Take the finished edge, put it in first, right side out, with the seam against the thumb seam over here, the seam by the thumb. Stick it in there. And then make sure you line up your seams very closely. Make sure the edges come all the way out for all three layers. <clears throat> and we put a little pin in. Then we go pull it and go opposite, total opposite, 180 degrees. So you're distributing the fabric inside same distance all the way around make sure that lining is up as high as the other layers and pin it then we go quarter the way between those two pins and do the same thing and instead of putting a pin the other quarter way we're going to just stick that underneath the needle and that'll hold it. Just making sure those three layers are even. And I gave this tip in another video. Sometimes when you have bulky uh, fabric, you have to lift your presser foot above the normal area where it clicks up. And then when you let it go and it goes down, you think it's all the way down, but sometimes it's not. You have to remember to push it all the way down if you've given it that extra lift. So, straight stitch. Leaving about a quarter inch on the outside of the presser foot. Pulling my pins as I go. Aligning up that edge again and again because it wants to shift as you go. All right, when you meet where you started. up a little and then I switch to the zigzag and make sure my needle's out because the zigzag changes the uh, tracking below and if the needle's in there it might bend so lift the needle up change it to zigzag and then go closer to the edge off any extra now here if you found you missed something I did miss something on this so let me show you all right right here see I didn't get that piece up in there I'm gonna have to do that over but with the good thing about sweater material is it stretches a little so I don't have to worry too much about it. I just take a little deeper seam right there First with the straight stitch. And then with the 
with the zigzag. You've got to check your work. All right, now it's all caught. Let me trim a little bit of the fuzzies, but not too much. All right, now I can pull this out. But if you remember, last time I stitched this edge down so it wouldn't make a bump under there. And I'm going to do the same thing. Where this edge sticks out right here, I'm going to lay it flat and then stitch it down against the cuff before I fold the cuff all the way back. I'll check your comments now. Okay, 12 people here. Okay, Sky sent me her address. Thank you. St. Bernard Acres, hello. Okay, Princess Bride, you're right, Jamie. It was that uh, quote, um, have fun storm in the castle is from the Princess Bride. Okay. St. Bernard Acres, just sent the funds for my mittens. Oh, um, you know, I had the name, but I wasn't linking it to the channel. Okay, good. Those are your my mittens you're making. Yes, they are. Uh, they were ordered before I even. Uh, <laughs> they were ordered before I even uh, finished them. I had just cut them out and showed the materials I was using. And Saint Bernard Acres husband ordered them. It has to be cool to watch her making the ones you are getting. <laughs> oh, okay, it's him. They're for his wife. Okay. She's going to do a video when she gets them. She's really excited. Oh, how sweet. Good. A sur yes, I've said that in my other videos, Debbie, that um, a serger would be very helpful. I don't have one. I don't want to. Spending the money on one right now is just not in the cards. So, so I do the three steps instead of the one step with a serger. The only good thing I think about that is sometimes I make a mistake, and if I had a serger and I had already cut it, you know, a serger zigzags it and then cuts the edge, Sometimes I make a mistake, and then if it already cut it, I'm in trouble. Did you ever have that happen, Debbie? <laughs> you put a lot of nice work on your mittens. I do. I try really hard. I want to please people, and I want them to be quality. And uh, that's one of the reasons I'm going to sew this bump down, so when we fold it down, it doesn't make a bump on the, on the cuff. Don't like that. Nobody else would probably notice that much, but I do. All right, we're going to sew that bump down now. It's a little tedious and persnickety, but I can do it. So I gotta pull this cuff out this way so it doesn't bunch up underneath and catch under there. And then I have to pull the other side out over here so this side doesn't get under the needle. And then just go like an inch at a time, zigzagging right on that edge to put it down so it doesn't stick up and make a bump. Okay, why are you fidgeting up here, Thread? Behave yourself. Try that again.
little step is kind of a pain, but I think it's worth it to make them look nicer on the outside. As long as I don't catch the cuff in the wrong place. Because I've done it before. Then I had to tear the whole thing out. And that wasn't fun. Okay. So now that little uh, hem there is now flat. It's not sticking up. I can fold this seam over, fold the cuff down. Try it on. Get all the seams. Make sure they all fit nice in there, nice and even. Plenty of finger room up here. <laughs> for long fingers. All right, so now if if I was going to be putting buttons on, now the time is when I put little, you know, buttons on here, but she prefers them without the buttons, and that's perfectly fine. And so I'm just going to hand stitch all the way around here to finish it off. And then these mittens are done, except for the the last thing I do is I take tape and I go over them to make sure there's no fuzzy stuck on them and I pick off any pilling that might be on them to make them nice and smooth. And then they are packaged up and they are shipped out in a red polka dot bag with a bandana gram of sticker on them. So there they are. There's your mittens. All done except the hand stitching on the cuff. So I hope you all enjoy them and wear them in good health. And you saw them made. When you sew over the cuff, take off your stories tray. It might make it easier. I did, it won't stretch around it. It might, you know, maybe it will make it a little easier. Uh, but the, the, what do you call it? For this part, it's too narrow to actually, let me show you. A lot of people, they can take things, take this storage thing out, and then stretch this over like a sleeve or something, and uh, and then it goes a lot easier going around like that. But this is too, I've tried that. It's too narrow to fit over this. But it might be a little easier without the tray sticking out here, too. You're right. Maybe next time I'll try that. I love it when my subscribers give me tips that help. Okay, so thank you, Deborah. Deborah must sew a lot because Debbie... That's what I was doing wrong. That little lever thing on my bobbin. I forgot I was supposed to hold that longer. And... Thank you. That's going to save me a lot of time. Susie makes the best and the warmest. She really likes them. Oh, glad. And I think you're going to love them when you get them. Uh-oh. Got word, a sign saying my battery is very low. So I finished it just in time. They match her Carhartt coat and overalls. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, I expect to see you wearing them. Those are very cool. I need some. <laughs> well, I'll be making more. I've got a bunch more coming. The next ones I'm going to make, I have in this bag here. I've already got them started. I just have to... Uh... All right, these are, are planar. They're they got green backs, and they've got this uh, camel-colored top and a purple bottom. So they're kind of a color block mitten. And the this is going to be the cuff, a camel-colored col cuff. So that's going to be the next ones I make like that. They're almost, you can see, they're almost made. i got to put the liners in and put the cuffs on. So they won't take too long. They'll be the next ones I make. And I have a whole bag full <clears throat> of ones I've cut out. Green, purple, my two favorite colors. Well, there you go. I have a whole bag full of mittens I've cut out but haven't sewed together yet. But, you know, a lot of the work is buying the fat. Find, oh, look at this. This is some of the same fabric that I used in the mittens I just made. So I'll show you what these are. These are these backs. And that's part of the palm. And that's the other part of the palm. 
and then they have green cuffs. That's those mittens. So they'll be made up too. So I've got a whole bag full here. And what I hope to do eventually, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, make mitten kits so that I can put directions in and, okay, <laughs> I see it. Um, I've got um, kits I can make, um, make up with the directions in there and I'll put in enough fabric and liner material so you can cut out your own and learn how to make them yourself. I might be uh, kicking myself doing that, but it seemed like the thing to do because I can't make mittens for everybody. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy your puzzle sky. And I know Wallers that you'll enjoy your mittens and they'll keep you really warm. So I'll catch you next time. Be sure to hit that like button. It helps my channel.